So it's been way too long since I've done a reaction video to an episode of the one and only Computer Chronicles, a TV show about computers that originally aired in the 80s and had a crazy long runtime of 20 plus years or something like that. This episode in particular aired in the year 2000 and it's called Computer Games and Gamers. I'm pretty excited to watch this for the first time because 2000 was long before I got into PC building or PC gaming. So I finally get to see all of the PC games that I missed out on so many years ago. All right, we'll just jump right in. Before that, thanks to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. Founded in 2010, PIA is the industry leading no log VPN service and PC mag editor's choice that lets you browse the web freely and securely. Unlike using a so-called private web browser, PIA offers truly private web browsing so ISPs can't steal your data. You can also use PIA's private virtual network with unlimited access to thousands of servers across the world with dedicated apps for all platforms, including Windows, iOS, Android, Amazon Fire Stick, Linux, and more. Any content restrictions in your area can be bypassed easily with PIA, allowing free access to services like Amazon Prime, Hulu, Disney Plus, Netflix UK and US, and BBC. I personally love this feature because whenever I stream watch parties to Twitch, viewers need an Amazon Prime account with access to the movie that we're watching in their region. But with PIA, viewers are able to bypass this restriction and watch along with the rest of chat. Perhaps best of all, PIA operates on full transparency. Split tunneling capabilities means you control what data passes through the VPN and what doesn't. And since all of PIA's clients are open source, you can always look at the backend infrastructure to see how everything works. There's a convenient kill switch button in the app, and you can have peace of mind knowing that PAA never performs any logging ever. Multiple payment options include PayPal, Bitcoin, gift cards, and more. Instantly upgrade your web browsing security now with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Simply click the link in the description or in the pinned comment to get two years and three months for free for just $2.59 per month. Experience true internet freedom and start using PAA today. Here we go. The noise always gets me. The dial-up sound always gets me. This week on The Computer Chronicles, the best new computer games and online games. Ryan McDonald of GameSpot.com shows us his favorite Wow, look at those games. graphics. Brandon Justice of IGN.com tells us why it's not the end of the world if you can't get your hands on a PlayStation 2. <laughs> Some things never change. Just change the number at the end. The new PlayStations are impossible to find, too. Generation Magazine shows us a great new game called No One Lives Forever. And meet Dennis Fong, Thresh, perhaps the world's best Twitch gamer, with tips on how to beat those nasty creatures who- Wait, did he say the best Twitch gamer? What did he say there? The world's best Twitch gamer, with tips on how to beat those nasty creatures who- I, have, I still don't know what, what the heck he said. Plus my of the week, one printer that does two jobs. <laughs> Wait, don't tell me it scans too. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Shafe. You know, most people don't realize it, but more money is spent in this country on computer games and video games than is spent going to the movies. It is a huge business, and when a really great new game comes out, that is an exciting moment if you're a gamer. So this week, we thought we would bring you up to date on the best new electronic games, and quite a few of them to talk about and start off. This is Ryan McDonald, senior editor with GameSpot.com. You've been here before. Yes, sir. You're up all night playing games, <laughs> which you're going to show us one of them in just a minute. He looks like a typical gamer. <laughs> it's called Hitman, yeah. which is new up here right now. First Hitman! Of all, Hitman, what kind of game is it? It's a, it's a third-person kind of shooter game. You know, it's, a, it's not your typical, you know, wham, bam, shooting, running through, you know, trying to stack. What's Isn't... different about it? It's, a, it's more of a thinking game. You gotta think okay. about what you're gonna do. The That's crazy. Kind of, uh, Explaining kind of Hitman like to someone for the very Fonda. first time. And uh, basically you're just told to get dressed and start learning how to how to fight, how to use Where guns. are you? What's the deal? What am I supposed to do? Yeah, exactly. So uh, so here's here's part of the game when you just first start and you got all these cool little knives that you can pick up over here. Those graphics are really not bad for two decades ago. To... But uh, what's fresh about Hitman? I mean, we've had other games right. that were sort of a little bit of brains and a little bit of killing. Uh, what's fresh about Hitman is a lot of this people makes me want to play didn't the new like Hitman. it at first. They had, I don't uh, even know if it's any good. There's a little, little, few small problems okay. that the game had. Uh, but uh, here's a little target practice for you. But uh, once you finally get into the game and you start learning how it works and how it plays, it's actually quite good. Why did okay. they load right, so like, the tutorial scene for this episode? Why did they actually just show long? 
Yes. Definitely. And let, let's like boot the middle that up. of the game. While we're waiting for that to boot up, I got to ask you the question. Okay. I always ask. I mean, people see this as a hey, these kids are learning how to put well, steel rope wires around people's <laughs> necks and <laughs> shove knives in people. Right. Oh, no. Is it a bad thing for kids to be doing? Oh that? no. Uh, what? To be perfectly honest, I don't think a lot of kids are playing these games. Huh. Um, you know, these computers cost a lot of money. Older guys like you. Yeah, I think mostly 18, 24. Yeah. yeah. Well, sure, that's I not the case anymore. Like, you know, you know, the yeah. producer yeah. had to throw uh, that question yeah, in there. Too. We don't have time to show this, but I know there's another game you like, and this has just incredible graphics. Sacrifice. Yes. Just tell us yes. briefly what's cool about Sacrifice. Uh, Sacrifice is really different. It's a real-time strategy game as well, but uh, like gorgeous pictures. Seen. Beautiful, beautiful game. I don't and, think I'm uh, familiar with that. It's got a storyline that you know anybody that's into fantasy stuff yeah, will really like. Yeah. Okay, so let's review for folks who talk about. We showed Hitman number one. Okay, that was a game you like. Yes. All right, that was the, the violent one. <laughs> the face! Uh, Hold on. Riddler 2. Hold yeah, on. Yeah. What? It's just an ordinary crabby. Oh my goodness! Squid! That has to be memed, right? That has to be a meme. Uh, looks like someone just shitting his cereal or something. Uh, I don't. He just looks disappointed and shocked and confused. Beautiful game, Sacrifice. Your three picks. Which I love how they're, like he goes on, like the graphics in this one are amazing, and they don't even show the game. What's up with that? Hey, Ryan, thanks right. a lot. Thank you. All right, well, another great gamer site on the web is IGN.com. That's part of Snowball.com. These guys, of course, also live and breathe computer games and video games. Here to tell- I wonder, I wonder if the dude in the back, now that Stuart's not talking to him anymore, I wonder if he just, like, is playing the games in the background. Or is he just sitting there, just staring at the wall? I, I always wondered that. I'd be playing the game for sure. Plus, well, what's hot from uh, their perspective is Brandon Justice. How you doing, Brandon? Pretty good. You are like the Sega Dreamcast expert, right? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Okay, Dreamcast. Now, everybody's like crazy over PlayStation 2, and I got to get my PS2. And people think, are you sure that's Dreamcast, this old stuff? Do I have to like panic if I didn't get my PlayStation 2? Uh, well, not really. <laughs> uh, to be real honest, the only reason you might want to panic is if you were really wanting to watch that new DVD you got. You want a DVD player. And yeah, but you know what? Circuit City has them on sale right now for 90 bucks. <laughs> Run out and get one. So you don't think Ninety dollars for a DVD player? Uh, no, not really. I think. I mean, the online thing isn't really there yet. Right? I, it won't be until probably Q2 next yeah. year for Sony, and even then, it's going to be broadband and it's very limited. I mean, I know I heard you saying you don't have access right. uh, where you live, and it took me forever to get it where I live. Yeah. And, you know, I can just imagine what it's like in the rest of the country. Okay. But and actually, Dreamcast. Pretty cool graphics, pretty great action. The online stuff is there. It's a pretty respectable platform, right? Oh, definitely. As far yeah. as games go right now, nobody's putting out more great it's games. It's definitely going to take right. Sega now, to the, the next level. Now, the online stuff is what I want to focus on you. That's what's really Three cool about this. We're online right now with our Dreamcast, right? That's right. And you've got a hot game, NBA 2K1 up here, which is online, play basketball against other dudes, right? Right, right. All right so you're online. Let me guess. Let me guess. The IGN guy's going to give it a 10 out of 10. And now, just sort of tell us what's going on here and get us a game going. Here. All right, basically, we're in the lobby. Uh, I guess we'll challenge Stone402. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Definitely lots of hoops. There's lots Super of balls. Super Dupa Fly. <laughs> they right. did not screen these All usernames. Right. And basically, you can challenge <laughs> anybody in the lobby um, to a game, and whether or not they accept is up to them. Oh, All right. He didn't apparently want any. All right. I didn't want to play with you. Yeah, we'll go check somebody else. Oh, we got a game here. All right. All right. So who are you? You're Lakers. Uh, he's a Lakers because he's a wuss. Old school <laughs> matchmaking. That's what the bad players do. Who are you going to be? I'm going to be the Clippers because uh, oh, I'm not Clippers afraid. Oh, Clippers, Lakers. Uh, all about not the Clippers. Afraid. Okay. Let me talk so to him. So show us what this action looks like. Here. All right, Commence right now we're setting up talk. a game. We're picking teams, and basically he's ready to go. I'm ready to go, so I send my controller up. He goes down. Does it matter if you're on different speed lines? Um, actually, everyone connected right now through basketball is playing uh, via the 56K modem that okay. comes packed in with the Dreamcast. <laughs> um, broadband modem is actually coming out um, in early okay. January for the system, and then people will be able to so get So to do what you're versions. doing, you just need the basic Dreamcast console. Right, right, right out of the box. Jack. Okay, go. Yeah, everything you need for online gaming outside phone of games jack. is right. ready right out of the box. All you need is a phone line. Yeah, I got to talk a little trash. <laughs> tells me good luck. I say, you'll need it more than me. Oh, it's actually pretty cool. Okay, so the, the play and the, and the game control is basically as if you're the same as single player, right? Except right. you've got the other guy on the other side. Mm -hmm. All right, go. All right, here we go. All right, Clippers, tip -off. see how you can do. Ah, old Kane is going to get killed. We like to try, huh? What are you doing? Ah, he's changing the camera. Come on, just play. Wait, he's right. able to right. right. so right. play an online game? Right okay. now. So Did he just pause the online game? You can do that? 
We have a little bit of time left, and I want you to mention a new game which has just come out, which is really cool, which is Fantasy Star Online. Could you pop? It's just a little demo. The game Fantasy you Star out. Online. Oh, man. Games, guys. Fantasy Star Online. Uh, it's from Sonic Team, the creators of Sonic Adventure, right. Samba de Amigo, Knights, a lot of Saturn, style. Genesis Classics. Yeah. Uh, this is their newest game. It's actually going to be the first console online RPG. Um, oh. Which is very similar to Baldur's Gate. I remember that. Really that was a big deal. <laughs> All right, coming up next, several other great games. Spent too games. much time balling. You'll get to meet perhaps no time for gamers in the world, Star. the legendary Thresh. We'll be right back. Another great resource for the latest in computer gaming is Next Generation Magazine. And here's a guy who has a great job. He gets paid to review new games for the magazine. Welcome to Jeff Lundrigan. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm just fine. All right, you got a couple Living games I know life. you really like. Yes. And one of them is the new Mech Warrior, Mech mm -hmm. Warrior Vengeance. Mech, Mech Warrior. Warrior. First of all, to, well, people who don't know, what's Mech Warrior about? Well, Mech Warrior is basically it's a game about giant fighting robots, um, which you know is a great thing. Twenty to do. second century yeah, warfare, exactly. or whatever. Yeah. All right, why don't we get it up here and okay. take a look at what it looks like here? I never so played we, any Mech Warrior. Uh, play a little game here. So we oh, are out okay. in the desert. So we're out in the desert. None of my friends is you. That's me. Much I love how he's using a full blown joystick. Right. Um, so you're going to use his pieces to build your next robot. Power exactly. move. All right, now before we, I, I want you to get to another game in a second, which is your other favorite one you want to show. It's called yeah. No One Lives Forever. But first of all, I got to ask you about this mother of all joysticks <laughs> you have here that you've been playing with. What is the deal here? This is um, the only one who knows. Yeah, this is the uh, Microsoft Force Feedback 2. It's uh, it's their latest Force Feedback joystick. You can see it kind of jumping around in my hand. Every time I take a hit, it takes a bump. Right. Um, so it's got the force feedback. Well, I know you can actually rotate the, uh, and twist the joystick. You can rotate the joystick. All right, now before we get to the, the next game, I want to ask you about Microsoft much? here. Their joystick, their game. Their joystick, their game. We've been talking about the PS2. We've mm -hmm. been talking about the Dreamcast so far in the show. They're coming out with an Xbox. Yeah. They what, are. What's going to be special about that? Uh, well, it's going to have a hard drive and a modem uh, inside it from the get-go to start with. Uh -huh. um, wow. It's going to be real easy to develop for, at least according to all the developers that we've talked to. Uh -huh. Um, it's basically, it's not exactly off-the-shelf parts, but it's parts that people are really familiar with. And so it's not going to take a whole heck of a lot of resources. So it could be hot. A, could be hot. Could be very hot. <laughs> right, so let's could take a look at the next hot. game here. Xbox. No one lives forever. Could be hot. Right, let's take a Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Take the look at the game and tell me why you think it's so cool. Okay. Well, the coolest thing about it is that you can see it's kind of a first-person shooter, but unlike Dude, most the rate of fire, shooters, what the hell? This isn't set in some crazy dystopian future, or you know. This is the know, past, not the future. This is the like. past, right? In fact, this is set this square game. in the middle of the swing in sixties. I'm sure some of you guys will give me a lot of shit. Very though, much so. No, you are a, an operative. You're Kate Archer, okay. and she's the only female operative of an international super spy organization known as Unity. Not if only this game launched today, people will be like, awful, why is the lead character you know, female? The, uh, the, the terrorist organization harm. You've also got to battle against the sexist attitudes of all your colleagues who keep telling you. Email. Right, <laughs> well, it actually is about like this is not sexism. a suitable job for a woman. And you're not Lara Croft here. No, you're not exactly Lara <laughs> oh, Croft. Oh man, the internet well, would I'm have a freaking field day with this game. I'm just kind of going dumb about this. But notice how, oh shoot. <laughs> the Wilhelm so, scream. A little bit of thinking here. Again, what's female Wilhelm scream? Them up with figuring out how no, to not, not be seen and not be discovered right. and so on. And it absolutely nails its subject matter too. Is a really cool thing. Uh, it's it's based around all the the silly spy movies from the '60s that you could possibly. So it imagine. really is a spoof of the James Bond exactly, type stuff. Exactly. Exactly. And it's it's got levels that are based around every spy movie you could you could think of. It's got a ski chalet. It's got an underwater spear battle. It's got an outer space. So it's kind of a little fun and. It's very tongue in cheek. Right. It's no a whole one lives lot forever. Of fun. Yeah. Thanks much. Thank you. All right. Well, if you've played games like Quake, you know how hard this can be on your fingers and on your brain. In fact, it ought to be an Olympic sport, I would think, because so the guys said. who are good at these games are really kind of athletes in a way. One of the best of them is the gamer named Thresh. His real name is Dennis Fong, and this is Thresh over here. How you doing, Dennis? How you doing, Stuart? And uh, Asian Ninja. About Quake, and people don't know, a couple of years ago, you were considered like the best Quake player in the world, right? That's right. Actually, it, uh, it all culminated into this uh, big Quake tournament featuring a uh, red Ferrari. Right, right. Which you won. Which I ended up winning. You That's won. Right. And you were too young to even drive it at the time, right? Oh, Thresh. Uh, not sorry, not Thresh. Not it was a switch. stick. <laughs> it was a stick. I didn't actually right. know how to drive stick at the time. So you know this stuff. Now, there's a new version of Quake out now, Quake 3 or Quake Arena. First of all, what what's new and better about this in the original Quake that you played? Uh, well, Quake 3, the new one, is actually a lot more arcadey. Uh, oh, okay. It's, it's software, the developers of Quake have simplified it. 
to where it's much easier to get online to play against people. It's right. much easier to find opponents, and it's also much easier, easier to kill your opponents. I wonder how much they money this guy was making really as like one of the top really gamers in the world away. in right. 2000. So then, since you were the master of the original Quake, I mean, you like this one more or less? Is it more of a challenge, less of a challenge? Well, Quake has always been a classic. It right. still is a class right. classic, right. and it's you know it's kind of back in my roots. But right. I have to admit that Quake Three is it is incredibly fun to play. All right, we have it up here. I so really give do some idea what Quake regret Three regret not ever well, playing Quake. Well, Quake Three not ever is, getting that experience. It's almost when it I guess the easiest way out. to explain it would be like paintballing on the computer. Okay. I bet that was uh, a hell of a fun time. You know, Right, now, now uh, keep, keep playing here, Dennis, but I want to ask you, for people who are maybe not into this as much as you guys are, we've seen a lot of these games, and they sort of all look alike. There's a gun at the front there, and there's a bunch of guys, and you blast away. And some people have trouble understanding what the, oh, what the kick of this is. Explain you what the thrill is. sweet child. Well, I mean, it's, you know, because it's all real time. I mean, it's, it's essentially like Cowboys and Indians all yeah, over again. Yeah, you can't stop virtual. and think. Right, exactly. So, it's, I mean, everything happens in real time. When your opponent moves left, she moves So, it is this real, like, game. adrenaline rush? I mean, you got to be be there or be dead. Right? Oh, yeah, and actually, you know, if you're playing alone at night in the dark room, you know, sometimes you pretty... can, if your opponent pops around a corner, you can jump out of your chair, basically. <laughs> it's pretty right, neat. Right. They've clearly never played Outlast. All right, now I want to talk to you about another game. Now, about, a, I guess it was two years ago, we showed the original Half-Life when it first came out. That was nice. a great game, of course. And now there's a newer version of Half-Life, again, a multiplayer internet version of it. Tell us about that. Well, Counter-Strike is uh, essentially, <laughs> was actually created by two did guys he, out of a group. Did he just call Counter-Strike Half-Life? Okay, moving on. Raj. Huh. And one of the really neat things about these games is that uh, it's modifiable. And so what they did was they took the original Half-Life engine and Mods. modified it and started building on it. And actually, they didn't do any marketing for it. They started off as a very small community. And as more and people, more and more people started playing this game, it just started picking up. So really, steam. kind of a grassroots. So I mean, is it really related? It just started to picking up steam. You see what he did there? This kid's a genius. Half-Life or not? Um, well, the neat thing about Counter-Strike, as opposed to a game like Quake Three, right. is that it's based entirely on realism. Meaning, you know, in Quake Three, there are things that you can do. You know, you're playing predominantly with a rocket launcher or a right, lightning right. gun, and you can actually rocket jump and jump <laughs> right. like 500 feet. But in Half-Life is like life. Exactly. Yeah. So in Counter Strike, it's actually it's uh, it's kind of like the Navy SEALs or um, SWAT team versus terrorists. Right. Give us a quick look at it now. Right. This is Counter Strike, uh, and you know, once again, this is a uh, this is the a same to sound effects Half all these years Half later. Half Makes me really appreciative yeah, that they okay. never updated. We're gonna have the original Half Life. Exactly. Right, that's cool. So yeah, this isn't you know meant to be internet multiplayer. We're not really online right now because we didn't have time to do it. But you're just going to show us the terrain here. I exactly. Guess. Well, you know, as I said before, uh, Counter Strike is based on real life, and this particular level that we're playing is based on Las Vegas. Okay. And so What's it? you know, as you can see, you know, the MGM Grand <laughs> type stuff. Right. Right. Um, and uh, essentially. So well, what, what's the realism in here? I mean, what do you have to do? Sword. Well, in Counter Strike, the differences are that you know, first of all, for example, the weapons. Uh -huh. If you hold down the weapons and fire. They're not always going to hit the same place. Just like in real life, there's recoil. Ah, oh, it moves around. Okay. Exactly. You know, number two, uh, <laughs> if you hit certain parts of the body, it does more damage. So if you hit the head, he's going to die instantly. Got it. So there's a lot of those real life elements. You know, here you see a vending right, machine right, that you right, can right. can't really buy anything, yes. but uh. You All right, so sort of make-believe a game, but very realistic make-believe game. Exactly. All right, Dennis, thanks a lot. Yeah, because bunny hopping is, is a tactic Navy SEALs use in real life. We all tend to have an output problem these days. You need a good, fast business printer for your oh, spreadsheets no. and word processing documents, etc. But We're at the you printer. also need a spiffy color printer that can do digital photographs or greeting cards, that kind of stuff. Well, up until now, that has generally meant having two different printers if you're serious about either one of those functions. Wow. But I have found one printer more. that actually does both very well, and that makes life a lot easier and cheaper. Oh my it is God. this Take new my money. Epson Stylus Color 980. I actually what? use it as my business printer and as my fun printer. What amazes me about the printer, it's an inkjet printer, yet it is really fast, about four seconds per page. In fact, this baby four? overall is faster than the laser printer I was previously using. But wow. it also gets you this incredible quality 8x10 color photos from your digital camera. Oh my camera. God, what number and do I call? even this print only took about 90 seconds to come out. Only 90? The other thing I like about this printer is it is the Epson Stylus Color 980, and the price is only about $200. Wow. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. Thanks for and joining us. If you have any questions about anything you saw on the show, please check out our website at computerchronicles.org. Hope we'll see you here next time. What?
what innovative tech they feature on the show. I do not regret watching that episode at all. That was fantastic. <laughs> I'm actually familiar with most of the games featured in this episode, but I don't think I ever played any of them when they first came out, obviously because I didn't have a PC. Uh, they did showcase some Dreamcast games. I never owned a Dreamcast. I was more of a Sony, Nintendo guy, but um, I'm sure some of you guys have played several of the titles that were featured today. So if you did, let me know which games you played what you thought of them, how much time you sank into them. I'd, lo I'd love to hear your nostalgic stories and all that stuff. So guys, thank you for watching this one though. Toss a like on it before you go. If you enjoyed it, get subscribed for more tech content on the way and I will see you guys in the next video.